Show me some love. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Eighth grade, unit five, lesson two. Introduction to functions. Problem number one. Here are several function rules. Calculate the output for each rule when you use negative six as the input. A, negative six is the input. The function is subtract seven. Negative six minus seven. The output is negative 13. B, negative six is the input. The function is square the input. So negative six squared or negative six times negative six. The output is 36. Negative six is the input. The function is divide by three. Negative six divided by three. The output is negative two. The input is negative six. The function is divide the input into three. That means how many times does negative six go into three? Or three divided by negative six. The output is negative one half. The input is negative six. The function is write pi. The output is pi. So when a negative six goes in, a pi comes out. The input is negative six. The function is find the volume of a cube where the side length is equal to the input in centimeters. That's an error because the side length can't be a negative number. Problem number two. A group of students is timed while sprinting 100 meters. Each student's speed can be found by dividing 100 meters by their time. Is each statement true or false? Explain your reasoning. A. Speed is a function of time. Let's just say the time for one of the runners was 60 seconds. 100 meters divided by 60 seconds would equal 5 thirds. If the input was 60 seconds and the function was 100 divided by the input, the output would be 5 thirds meters per second. Imagine the input was 30 seconds. The function would be 100 divided by the input and the output would be 10 thirds. That would mean that the speed would be 10 thirds meters per second. This is true. Speed is a function of time. B. Time is a function of distance. Imagine the input is distance and the distance was 100 meters for all the runners. If the time for one runner was 22 seconds and the second runner's time was 30 seconds and the third runner's time was 52 seconds, what would the function be? We can't have the same input but have a different output. So this is false. Time can't be a function of distance. C. Speed is a function of number of students racing. False. The speed doesn't get affected by the number of students racing. It doesn't matter if there's two students racing or a hundred students racing. D. Time is a function of speed. Imagine that the input is speed, meters per second. So let's say that this person ran 50 meters in 11 seconds. The function could be 100 meters divided by 22 seconds, which is equivalent to 50 meters in 11 seconds. Imagine the input is 4 over 1. The function could be 100 meters divided by 25 seconds, if the time was 25 seconds. 100 over 25 is equivalent to 4 over 1, or 100 meters in 25 seconds is equivalent to 4 meters in 1 second. This is true. There is one time for each speed found. Problem number three from eighth grade unit four lesson 15. Diego's history teacher writes a test for the class with 26 questions. The test is worth 123 points and has two types of questions. Multiple choice worth three points each and essays worth eight points each. How many essay questions are on the test? Explain or show your reasoning. Multiple choice plus essay equals 26. Since multiple choice questions are worth three points each, we can represent multiple choice as 3M and essay questions are worth eight points each, so we can represent essay questions as 8E. 
The whole test is worth 123 points. The 26 questions represents a total of 123 points. So the equation reads 3m plus 8e equals 123. Let's solve for m in this first equation. We can do that by subtracting e from both sides. m equals 26 minus e. So now that we know what m equals, we can substitute 26 minus e, where the m is, in this second equation. The new equation reads 3 times 26 minus e plus 8e equals 123. Use the distributive property and multiply 3 times 26 and 3 times minus e. We need to collect like terms. Negative 3e plus 8e, that's the same thing as 8e minus 3e, or 5e. Since we're solving for e, we need to subtract 78 from both sides. That leaves us with 5e equals 45. We want just 1e, so let's divide both sides by 5. 5e divided by 5 equals 1e, and 45 divided by 5 equals 9. We know that e equals 9. Now we can substitute e with 9, making m equal to 26 minus 9. So m is equal to 17. There are 9 essay questions and 17 multiple choice questions. Problem number four. These tables correspond to inputs and outputs. Which of these input and output tables could represent a function rule, and which ones could not? Explain or show your reasoning. All of the inputs for table A are different. As long as the inputs are all different, you can have some outputs the same. So, table A represents a function rule. Some of the inputs for table B are the same yet they have different outputs, and that's not possible. Table B does not represent a function rule. All of the inputs for table C are different. All of the outputs for table C are the same, and this is possible. So table C is representing a function rule. Table D. All of the inputs for table D are the same, but all of the outputs for table D are different and you cannot have different outputs for the same inputs. So table D is not representing a function rule. Help me disrupt YouTube's algorithm by liking this video, commenting on this video, sharing this video, and subscribing to my channel. Thanks, I appreciate it.